I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man, this sucks. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Souls podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in a break room. My co-host, Josh Ricardo. Edward, hello. How What's are up, you? Bro? I'm good, dude. How about you? Uh, I'm pretty good. So today, I want to start the show off talking about discrimination for being a comedian at the day job. Discrimination. Discrimination. It's one of the highest forms of discrimination in this country. It is against <laughs> comedians. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know. All right. I think this is a Josh topic because I've worked in offices my mm-hmm. whole life. Yeah. I know waiters, they're always actors or comedians. So right. it, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. But when it comes to the office gig, and I had to learn this very early on. It was like, um, I don't know what job it was. It was probably that job that I've talked about before where they... They fired me because I wrote that blog on my comedy website. Remember that I talked about that on the show a few episodes back? Uh, I think it was then that I started to really see that I shouldn't be telling people at the day job that I'm a comedian, that I should just keep my head down and work. Uh, And then... It's a common uh, thing. Like, I meet a lot of comics. And I'm always... Because just a sidebar real quick, because I meet comics, I'm like... And I find out that I've been talking... I've been calling them... By a different name, like I'm yeah. like that's not your real name. Yeah. For how long have I? I, I went even... by a whole alias before. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Went, when I was in San Diego, in fact, if if I meet somebody, it's so funny because um, Ari Shafir and I go way back. Like when I first started at the La Jolla Comedy Store, he was one of the LA guys that would come down and perform a lot, and him mm-hmm. and I became pretty friendly when I first started. And I went by CTP, the Crooked Tooth Pimp, because my teeth were so jacked up, and it was my AOL screen name. And I was dating off the internet. <laughs> CTP. So I carried it over when I started stand up. Oh, I love this. And I had hats with the CTP on it. <laughs> I, I'm gonna find. I have pictures. Oh, of it. dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it for yes. this episode. I'll send them. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have like video clips of me doing a whole thing. It was like a persona I, oh, I carried over. Oh man. Because BT was huge, and I yeah. I could only get up in black rooms in the beginning because I was all crowd work and and that's and very disgusting. Common. And like, that's very common. Yeah, and I was with the, like the, oh, the whole yo, like, I was name like the special name. Yeah, I was right. hip hopped out. It was like everyone because <laughs> I used to love going to Chocolate Sunday at the Laugh Factory. This uh-huh. was back 2004, and all those dudes had like cool name yeah earthquake or what yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. had like a name bruce bruce uh-huh. uh all that shit arnez j everyone had like a cool name hamburger jones i remember i met remember one hamburger guy jones? <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember meeting one guy at the open mic there and his name was incognito which i thought was like <laughs> that's awesome i still it's like one of those names dude. i still bring up like there's like five guys i remember this dude and i every time i see him i'll text him like incognito because that dude, oh, dude was our friend of ours we had another dude, that's guy an awesome fucking name named lil wody this Little is before what? everyone was Lil. This dude was from New Orleans. Uh-huh. Like Lil Wayne was just out, but this dude was Lil Wody, and he drove an ambulance. On a that was his real gig. But when he would show up to the comedy shows, he was dressed in all fucking oh, like BET top hat, like players ball shit, oh, green, dude. like emerald green suits. I would love to like show up to a show and like see him. He's running late. He's coming with the ambulance. Oh yeah, yeah. Parked he up is like changing <laughs> on the gurney. All of his clothes are laid out on the gurney in the back. <laughs> and he go, little Wody. I fuck him that I nose bleed. He's always say, I fuck him that I nose bleed. That's he would awesome. try to pick up girls in the ambulance. Like if he oh. Dude, I, mean, I don't yeah. know why I said that like it would be yeah. surprised. I know. I'm like, dude, if I, I had said that out loud, I'm like, everyone, <laughs> of, if, a Lil, if his name's Lil Wody, I don't, still to this day, I don't know his name. Yeah, there are sure. tons of guys who I have no idea what their real names were. Yeah. No, no, one no, guy no. was a legit garbage man, one of the other black comics. I, like, these are all my crew in the first that's cool, awesome. two or three years. Uh, that's so cool. So uh, I think like I really. F- Go on with your. Do you have a point to make about everyone no, having a different name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because so, it's a very common thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Because a, a lot of things like work or family. Yeah, kind of work. Yeah. A lot of it was about. I didn't. You know, I think there, without social media, stand up was such a mystery, even more so than it is to me now. Well, that's the other thing too, right? When you start, because I remember. I, this kid was doing this kid. He's a photographer now, and he kind of blew up with this different thing. He's doing these puppets. But when I first met him, he was like a photographer. He's doing his puppets. He's doing his puppets. That's quite the throw. And you just yeah, he's no, he's <laughs> like, no, no. I love puppets. On, That's on, why he's I, doing a whole puppet thing on Instagram. He's he's huge now. But like, um, I met him. He was like doing 
you know, just running a bar show and like running a mic or something like that. Like he, he didn't know what was going on just starting. Right. And he was a photographer. So that's kind of how he got in. And I remember him telling me he he's Mexican. So he um, he was going on stage with a luchador mask on. And so, like, I would see him, you know, at Mike's and stuff with the luchador mask. And then, you know, then we're, we got talking a little bit. I go, dude, what's with the mask? <laughs> and he goes, and it's just to your point that, like, people don't know. Yeah. He goes, dude, I don't want to, if I get famous, I don't want people seeing my face. I was like. Weird. I'm like, do you really isn't think? Isn't that the point of this, though? But the other thing is, do you really, like, it's such a. Well, everyone like, thinks it's going to work out. That's everybody, the that's thing. what I'm saying. No it's like starts, everybody from the get thinks it's going to be. And that's the only be. reason why people stay in it. And it's, I think that's like the the point I'm making with social media is people can see a direction it, for it working. Right. Stand up was not that way. It was like, you know, I remember doing it thinking, what if I'm really. I, it wasn't because I was going to be famous as much as I thought I would rather hide behind this persona than go in as Josh Accardo. Right. And it wasn't until I moved here where I saw like New York was so different there. It, it's so weird. It's like because of social media, it, it, it kind of made a lot of stuff universal comedy wise, like uh-huh. stand up, yeah, in my yeah, opinion, just yeah. from my perspective of starting out. New York was so different because you had when I was starting, it was like Dane Cook was huge and Attell was huge and they couldn't have been more different. Right. There wasn't pockets of guys that you could go like, okay, these are the guys that are the, whatever, the com- comics I relate to, where they're all kind of had, they're all doing something that aligned on to a certain level. Like there's probably one thread I can find with every popular comedian right now that that someone watching could point to. Back then it just wasn't. So it's like, you had Dan Cook doing pre- that first album, really funny bits, great act outs, but it was act out heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you had a tell that legit just stood there and rifled awesome shit at you. Yeah. It was like the epitome of what stand up was and I really liked what he was doing. But I, I couldn't help that, you know, I am an act out. I would love to do act outs. That's like I'm a very this is my how I make money. My face is a very I don't know. I I use my face a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh which was not really good. Right. <laughs> when I first moved here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looked at pretty much as like, oh, he's hacky. Right. He's always doing act outs. Yeah, like yeah, they yeah. hated what I was yeah. doing. It took me a long time to get any spots. Uh but when I moved here I realized, oh, I can't use a fake name. I have yeah, to yeah, use yeah. my real name. Yeah. And one of the things I carried with me from San Diego is that I cannot tell people that I work as a comedian. Because you know, one for a long time and this is a reason why I'm glad we have this show because I lived in such shame for having to support myself without it being stand-up just comedy right yeah, yeah. you know because you yeah. think like oh i'm a failure you right. don't know then that 99 percent of your colleagues we talked to all these comics and they're like, like yeah, oh, no, yeah i walk dogs i, I mean when, do sarah, all when yeah. sarah was on the show I'm like <laughs> oh yeah i had to go to fuck my gig after i did fallon like I, that to me was because yeah. like you're so naive i thought the minute i get on tv is the minute i say goodbye to the fucking day job yeah right and it's not the case no, no, at all. No. Because for those of you out there that have no idea, like, if you're making 50 grand a year at stand-up, you're doing really well. Really well. You're like top 1% earner yeah. in the field. If you're making 50000 without being really famous, and even if you do have a name at stand-up, you're doing very well. Yeah. Uh, but that is nowhere near enough to live in, in New York City. I can't afford where I live off 50 grand a year. No. This is a six-figure city, and that's middle-class income here. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, that being said, the reason why I wanted to start the show off about being discriminated against is because I think in this day and age, you have to have two hustles. You know, if you, if you read what's going on online with inflation and with the way culture is in society and with all the things that everyone bitches about every day, the biggest takeaway the biggest factoid i always see come up is how many millennials gen zers have two jobs to earn it's like people selling real estate on the side but that's the thing though if i tell people at a day gig an office gig yeah that i'm selling real estate they respect that on the side it right. still carries this thing like right, i've been right, passed right, right, right. up for so many opportunities in an office setting solely because someone googled me and they can't say this to me but there is nothing else but this, right? right? Because they ask you a question when you apply to like big time office jobs. There's a question that they all ask you and one of those questions is, do you have other 
ways of earning income that you're currently doing. And you can't lie. I mean, I could lie. Oh, is that? I didn't know that. Well, I don't think I've ever had like a real job like that. That's funny. It's funny. And that's why I'm bringing it up because we always talk about like the shitty, shitty jobs. But there are shitty jobs that are like good jobs, but just the way they operate is kind of shitty. And that's one thing like they really want to know if you're going to be there. So even if I've been at a job for 10 years, let's say, and I am up for a promotion and not that like I didn't deserve that promotion, but I'm up for it. Yeah. They look down upon the reality that they can Google me and see that I'm a comedian, that well, I'm earning money elsewhere, that I could leave, but I could leave at any time. No, 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 no. It's not. Because it, I'm not you, one of them? No. It's fear that you're going to invest. You're going to say something. Oh. That's what it is. Even if I'm not, I'm not, I'm not famous, there's nothing that I could, there's no pull. Somebody could Google, listen, you represent, why don't you become an employee? Because I've been company. freelance for so long. Yeah. And then I worked, I, you know, I worked for, um, the, um, the the only like two like real jobs that I had where I worked for somebody was the um, the SNL place. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. And then I worked at McCann Erickson, the um, advertising firm, and I was an employee there for a couple of years. But most of the time, I was freelance in that yeah. all that edit uh, time. The um, what if they can Google you and you come up and you're saying something that just doesn't, so, and it's not even. It's somebody at work that doesn't like you. Somebody that you didn't say hi yeah. to. They're like, who is this guy? And then they take it to HR. And if that per- HR doesn't fucking care, HR cares if somebody else cares. Exactly. There is no. So, OK, take your point. Yeah. All about it. I had another job mm-hmm. where they found out. I never brought it up. I never promoted a show there. Never asked anyone to come to a show. Mm-hmm. They found out. And they reached out to me asking me to utilize some of the skill sets from being a stand-up and to promote the fact that I do stand-up. Yeah. And they still pass me over for opportunity, even though they have supported and cultivated my skill sets. Was this the place where you had the porn on the... No, 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 no. no. (laughs) This is a place where I was an adult. (laughs) Because that's what I'm looking at now. It's like, okay, here's where I'm at right now as as a performer... And all that stuff is how is, I'm going to be really frank on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the most honest I've ever been on any show right now. I don't like the majority of what we do. I don't like the the business. I don't like what's required of us. I love I love dirt bag comedians and being around broken people. And I love the stage. And I love the the people that gravitate towards that fans, audience, people, whatever that is. I, mm-hmm. I found that that to me is what drove me and guided me to stand up is that, you know, and being home, I think really drove this home to me. Like I was back home for the, my grandmother's funeral and being around all my family and all these nut jobs. You're like, do I want to be around them every day? No. But is there something to be said that I enjoy the three hours of chaos? Yeah, right. Oh, every sure. year I have with them sure. in a room. Sure. Yes, and I feel exactly the same way when I'm around, I call comics from the old days. Like seeing Graham was like, kind of seeing one of the comics from the old days. Like whenever we're around each other and I'm like, oh, I knew this guy from when I first started here. It's a whole, this is what made me love New York stand-up yeah. is I felt like, I felt home. Yeah. I don't go into clubs anymore and I don't feel home. Because everyone there, like, the turnover is really high. The guys yeah. that started with me are either doing really well or they're out of the game. Right. I'm like one of the few left in purgatory. Mm-hmm. So the way I see, like with the, the reason why I'm willing to do the podcast is because I love our work. I love the podcast. Yeah. All the stuff, att- like we had that meeting with, we, have, a, oh, we have people working with us that are really great. But having that meeting yesterday, I was thinking, or whatever day it was, and we were talking about how to grow the show. And it's like, Everything means something and everything means nothing. There was no, there's no rhyme or reason to this thing. And sometimes, and sometimes you're working so hard and you, all you could say is, I, I think it's going to work. There is no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the end, here's the thing. In the end, it's just be funny and then try and get as much of this other shit done as yeah. you can. Like yeah. that's, that's kind of. I think that's probably the because perspective. Because I, yeah. I do a lot of the grunt work on these, the, yeah. the, the fucking video and all this shit. You know what I was thinking the other day? I was thinking like uh, so fucking social media. Like I'm so, like remember the movie uh, Fight Club? 
Oh yeah. Right at the oh end. Oh my god, yeah. I love that movie, right? Yeah. At the end they blow up all the credit card buildings yeah. so that everyone can like reset. Like if they made that movie today, it would be all the social media oh, buildings. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just everyone's it, get a clean I need oh, it out. I dude, need it out. Just wiped. I need it all and out. All the social media just got wiped. I need I'm like, "Oh my god." Out. Let's I just really go back do. to like the golden age of stealing music. I mean, like that, I, <laughs> that's when It sounds insane. It sounds like old guy get off my lawn shit, but that's the truth. It's like uh, I I'm so over whatever everyone else is buying into. I'm just over it. It's just it's a, it's just a lot of work that I I see. Uh... And the the give back the value and not that you do. It. I personally think the work you're doing with the clips is the best work I've put on camera in a while. Yeah, yeah. And you, I, I think it's I, really the, good stuff. The outcome, I'm not mad at the outcome. That is good work. Yeah, but yeah. the. You know, like, and, and by the way, if you haven't subscribed and you're listening, do, do that. We need it. Click that shit. Please do it. It's like a, you know, we have these meetings <laughs> and we're like, you know, I try to bring up like, hey, we got 40,000. And, you know, people are that are in business with us are like, listen, that's awesome. We love that. But, you know, it's a, a radio show, right? I mean, essentially, it's, you need people to listen to it. <laughs> Hey, we sold hey, a lot of you ain't got that many. Hey, we sold a couple of shirts. Yeah, that doesn't matter. <laughs> I think you know what it hey, is. We do, too? It's like, hey, we only had twenty people at the show, but we sold two shirts, dude. <laughs> I got I gave about ten stickers away and it earned us about fifty dollars in tips. It's like everything I'm doing now, like all that it's funny because all those things that I'm bitching about now, right here, mm. were wins five years ago for me. Yeah. That's the thing. And now yeah, all yeah. those wins have turned into more disappointments. But we've said that before, though. The shit sandwich just rises. You know what I mean? <laughs> really There's is. always a shit sandwich, no matter what you're doing. Like, it's just, it's a better, you don't realize it still tastes like shit, but like, the yeah, it's yeah. just a newer. It used to taste less like yeah, shit. Yeah, it used to be like a uh, like a fudge sundae. <laughs> a hint of oregano in there. Yeah, right. You eat a fudge sundae, you're like, oh, this is shit. <laughs> Man, I've been a fool. <laughs> No idea. It looks the same. And I think that's why I, I'm i because I want to make more money and I need to make more money. I have put myself on a lot of debt and I don't have help. And it's you know, not that you should have help, but I feel like it needs to be said in this day and age because I feel like a lot of people are out there pushing fucking trauma that to me, comparatively speaking, is not trauma that are pushing. Oh, my finances. And then their daddy or mommy bails them out. Like I am very irritated by that because I don't have a mommy or daddy to bail me out. And I would love to have a rich uncle to say, Josh, here's 50K, and I probably would come on here and I wouldn't bitch at all. I'd probably be so focused on doing the funny and doing yeah. the, and making a clip and look at everybody, I'm yeah. doing reels. I would do it all. But the fact that I, every day, I wake up with this 500 pound fucking beast sitting on my chest <laughs> called life, debt, and where do we go from here? It really affects my day to day. <laughs> and I'm out there to earn, man. Like, if I know I can do seven jobs at once and I can do them all fairly well. And I'm willing to do that. But when you hold me back from getting an opportunity solely because this is the way now, this is the point I'm trying to make. This is the way now I earn money. When I grab the mic, I don't usually do free shows unless I know for a fact I have a paid show that I need to be fresh for. Yeah, right, right. So right. my approach to stand up is almost 99, 98% business now. The yeah. 2% of enjoyment I get is solely from the stage. I'm not out there chasing spots and hanging out at clubs because I love it like I used to. I'm there solely because I can still earn money at this and when I do I want to be prepared. So the fact that I'm business here and the business out there is shitting on me for doing business here even though they're everyone's required now to have a fucking have two jobs. I know people doing only fans that work a, an office job i know you know yeah, why yeah, am yeah. i being discriminated against when i know for a fact there are women in the office because i've seen them that have fucking only fans oh wow really yes oh my god why would you pass up a chance to have your you know to make money because you're taking pictures of your feet why would you begrudge me that and you claim to be so with with it work-life balance we're with it we're we're all about like being okay with our mental health. Do you think like HR gets like a free subscription? <laughs> like I mean, the guy in charge of like finance, I like, wish, yeah, right? <laughs> like you're just like she's like, hey, so we found this. Is this your only pitch? <laughs> she's like, oh, actually, you know what? It's we can have, they, but can I'm they do out that? Free subscriptions this month if you see, want one. <laughs> see, they can't fire you. They can't they, fire you for the OnlyFans. I don't think so. As long as you're not dragging the company in. 
because it's everything within a like we're talking about. Is that true? Big, you big can't business. fire, but like people. Here's the thing, though. You should be able to fire anybody if you don't fucking want them working at your place, though, right? Like, well, it's... when it depends on how big your company is. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you're publicly if traded, you're publicly traded. Oh, there's different you, rules. You can always find. I mean, they just find. A, there's always loopholes that they know about to fire anyone. So you're not right. wrong. But there's just more red tape they got to go through. Right, so right, right. Because right. they can get sued. They could fire you if you said something about the business. Oh, right. In the situation. Mm-hmm. Like if you're like, I have an OnlyFans and I just masturbated with the, a mouse Mobile. pad yeah. with the company's name on oh, it. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, Then they can go. That, that was detrimental to the company. And mm-hmm. you when you signed up to be an employee, all those rights were waived once you did that. So they can. But... I don't think they can do it if you are not mentioning the company, but what they can do is hold you back from any kind of promotion, and ultimately, they'll figure out a way to fire you. I, I just, it's just like anything else. Mm-hmm. They just have to go through a lot more. And mm-hmm. you can make a bigger stink. Like When you're a huge company, you could sue. You, you could grab a lawyer and go, I feel like I was discriminated against. Right, that's and, right. And if you choose, like that's the way you're going to go, of course, your job's See, gone anyways. I always worked for small places. The one place that I did work for with the big place was McCann Erickson. Yeah, and people that got fired did sue. There, yeah. was, there was a couple instances of people that like sued for getting fired over like ageism or uh, any the, kind of the discrimination. New, the new yeah, thing yeah, now yeah. is, but like the smaller places, they're like, no, dude, we're just we just gotta like, we're letting you go. Yeah, dude. because they they know for because one, they know that any lawyer looking to sue them, they're not going to get a huge payday out of that company. Yeah. They can only afford so much. Yeah. It's just like it, it's all about numbers. If you know you have a lot to lose, right, because and it's a easier small to pay you can off. Very easily show, like, dude, we're not making the same amount of money as we made last yeah. year. Where a big, huge corporation is yeah. like, they you got a lot making, of assets. You are making more. You got money. a lot. They'd rather that, pay you yeah. off than right. have to go through all yeah, that yeah, yeah. shit. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but the new thing now they do with people who are, you know, say you're middle management and above. The new thing they would do, this is what I've been seeing, is they'll go. Uh, They'll come to you and they'll go, listen, it's about time you're done here. Uh, we're going to move on, but we don't want to make you look bad. So how do you want to leave? Oh, oh, interesting. And then they give you an opportunity to go find a new gig. And then instead of announcing that you're gone, they say, thank you so much, Ed, for all your contributions. Ed has decided to move on yeah, to right. another job and yeah, bright, right. you know, will broaden his horizons and another scope of the business. Because it makes everybody look better. It that makes way. everyone look good. Yep. There is no reason to make anyone look bad, mm. even if they want to fire you. That's interesting. And yeah. one other thing they do, especially now, and I know a lot of people that work um, day jobs listen to our show, and they'll probably attest to this. Uh, because of the pandemic, a lot of companies now are finding a way to phase out virtual work they don't want to do that anymore they sure. want you back in the office yeah, in yeah. fact a lot of companies have already moved back to five days a week or four days a week mm-hmm. uh is they're doing this thing now i've been reading about where they if you're a virtual employee that that went virtual during the pandemic they have been asking people like hey we're gonna give you like for whatever five months you either gotta figure out how to get into the office or uh find another gig or early retirement like if you're old enough like you can retire right so they're just literally it was like a way to get a lot of people off the books too and i think ultimately they knew that i think the pandemic i don't i'm not a conspiracy theorist but i definitely think that it worked to a lot of people's advantage and big business really benefited from a lot of it from a financial like finances i really do feel like the finance background if a lot of those companies ran at full speed that whole time, they did not because you could do all that work virtually. Right. Right. And then on top of that, you could parlay the health risk slash this, 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 it points out different people like, Hey, I have a, I'm immune. I'm immune compromised. Okay. So you get to be virtual and you're always sick at work. Imagine, so imagine you have a bean counter looking at like, okay, how many people have been sick this year? How many people don't show up to work? How many people have we had to pay because of something that they had to take off? Like all the people that uh-huh. cost the company money with all of the benefits that they give out. That they, they don't want you to use all of them, but they like to say they have the benefits, right? But there are people that use those benefits. Right. Let's say a bean counter goes through the list of those people and they're like, check this out. We have 200 employees that are doing blah, 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 blah. Now that everything's back to normal, so to speak, 
we can offer them either a sev- like a like a severance package get them off our books what drives the stock price up it gives it, there's angles there well wait a second wait, 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 wait. you're i mean all you're talking about is costs though the the revenue drives the lack of revenue is what drives them to cut costs most places not not big companies not with stock value stock value even if you if you come in making more than you're projected the board goes awesome and then you go and also we well it's profit cut. and loss it's yes profit and we loss. cut P&L. out these jobs pnl right it's just like look also yeah. not only that that drives stock prices up but what I'm saying is when when profit what drives them to cut is when profits start to fall. Mm-hmm. Right? When profit cuz it's P&L. When the profits are sky high, yeah. They're like they don't care mm-hmm. as much. We're, I think cuz I work in finance so much and all these jobs that I've been through in uh-huh. my years, they don't they always they care. Always care. Always care. Because I've always worked for divisions that are associated with the 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 calculating of the money spent. Gotcha. The overall budgeting, mm-hmm. the overall acquisitions of company, like everything down to the fucking kernel of turd and the toilet that has to be has to be accounted for. Yeah, I've never really account. had to deal with that. I so I, I, in advertising, I feel like you're right. Your your field when the profits are up, they're not really bitching. Yeah, everybody's chill. everyone's making money. Eh. Not when it comes to finance, they yeah. want to make sure they're squeezing every uh-huh. inch of juice At out of that times. turnip, yeah. baby. They keep them totally separate. Yep. They're like, they have, we don't care how the profits are doing. No, we're just we focused on loss. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. loss is loss. That makes sense. So, and because they, you know, you're driving, especially banks. It makes sense because that's how you really gain the most. Because no one's ever. Resting on their laurels, no. like oh, dude, we're up. There's we don't the whole have to worry they have about the, this. They, they so keep much them manpower. totally separate. That's yeah, why right. the PWCs and the KPMGs and the Ernst and Young. I know most of us in entertainment don't hear Ernst and Young until they have the Oscars because they count all the fucking ballots. But those companies, that's what they do. So if your company is a massive company and you don't have the manpower to, like, say you're going to acquire some giant, massive company and you need to see what their true value is, they. They hire these PwC guys make so much money just to consult for six months on a project because they're in there knee deep in paperwork, digging through everything with a fine tooth mm-hmm, comb mm-hmm. to find every bit of value and every bit of loss. And what were those two? I'm thinking of office space. Yeah, now. it's seriously. The they said the Bobs. <laughs> the Bobs will come in, bro. The Bobs. They're that's PwC and KPMG are all Bobs. It's like just four. 40,000 bobs <laughs> that can't wait to fucking take a microscope up your ass so and figure good. out how much you're worth <laughs> and how much you're losing. <laughs> this is scary shit. I think that's another reason why I came in hot today is because I'm seeing, I, I've always felt on some degree, my naivete, if you will, that I had a, like, I could figure it out. That I could fucking, I'm a tough kid, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Dude, being tough on the street means zero in any business setting it's like that's why the meek shall inherit the earth because the meek are the bean counters they figured out like if you're a bean counter you're not scared of me unless i'm in an alleyway and you don't have a way out right right, maybe you are but overall you got the you got you got the cash to fucking fight it you can bury me you could probably buy my apartment like i knew a guy who was a billionaire indirectly fucking cocksucker this guy i remember uh he was doing some bullshit and some lady, he was trying to like do something to his penthouse, some kind of construction shit. And some neighbor lady was giving him a hard time. And I remember overhearing him. He didn't think any, any else was around. I remember he was on the phone. I think it was his lawyer. And he was like, why don't we just fucking just keep her in court until she's broke? Oh, uh, uh, they could just ruin your, your uh, life. God. And now that I have before that, I think that's uh, the thing is that never bothered me before because uh, I didn't have anything. Now that I have a son, uh, you're realizing more and more you can't really you have uh, to play ball and it's almost by their rules. And it's very upsetting to me. Oh, God, the headache. Right. The Being headache someone keeping that. you in court and you got to show up uh, and you got to show up. What a the higher you get, the harder it gets. Wow, that's fucking nuts, dude. Just keeping somebody in court. Ugh. Until they bury you in debt. They just God. bury you. Damn. Yeah. I don't. So um, <clears throat> So you're saying the top of that chain is uh, comedians that are discriminated <laughs> against? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> she was, was she a comedian? She must have been a comedian. <laughs> she was some other millionaire. 
<laughs> she was just a millionaire. This billionaire was very angry with her. <laughs> but I, I bet if she had a fucking tight five, you would have really buried her. <laughs> just don't let her find out she's a comedian. Yeah, hey, yeah. Don't, 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 don't let this guy find out. Hey, You're going to be at the YouTube comedy store next private, week. All right. <laughs> Honestly, I'd rather tell people I'm a realtor. In fact, I'd rather them think I had an OnlyFans. I almost would rather them know I had an OnlyFans and me be a stand-up mm -hmm. at this point. I uh, I bring it up sometimes. I try not to bring it up. But, you know, in my neighborhood, especially like the dog park, you know, I run that show up in my uh, neighborhood. My face is on a poster. I ran into one of your... This time I did your shows, I ran into one of the posters, too. Oh, did you? That's so great. Oh, yeah, because I put them everywhere. Oh, it's right by the subway. It's yeah, perfect. I put them all over the subway. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, You're it, genius. It works. It does work. It totally works. Um, but every once in a while, I'll get um, people like, oh, you've... And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like trying to walk my dog. But, but you know what's weird is you know, running the show in the neighborhood, and it's been going on for like five years now, so I see a lot of Concussion's people. a great show. If you're ever in New York Washington City, Heights. make the trek to Washington Heights. It's worth it. Yeah, it's a good show. But so, like, I'll see people, and uh, they'll nod at me, and I don't know if they know me from the show, because I don't or recognize the dog. Them. Or the dog. Right. I'm like, is it just is it just somebody that... It's, I, you want not, it to be the show, but it's mostly the dog. It's probably the it's dog. It's Louis <laughs> Contagious. <laughs> I haven't met him yet, and I know everything about his life. That's the dog. He's like the guy. He's like the neighborhood guy. He's yeah, the he, guy. He's a party dog. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. People love that dog. Yeah. Um, he always walks around with a ball in his mouth. Yeah, see, so he's, it's it's everyone knows him. Super. Yeah, you're super you're cute, nowhere yeah. near as famous as that dog. In Isn't that, that crazy? Neighborhood. Isn't that crazy? No, because I it, Levon's my son's more famous in the neighborhood than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the the Slovakia truck guys wave at him. All the neighbors know. Like everyone around here, in a mile radius knows Levon. It's fucking fantastic. Yeah. So cool. I'd rather be that way. Yeah. <laughs> like Louie, I love Louie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people know me because of Nucci. Like when my daughter, you know, when she's out, they know Nucci. Yeah. So it's like having huge tits. It, having it? a dog? Having a dog is like having giant, yeah. beautiful, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People just sit real high, yeah, yeah, yeah. never wear a bra. 100%. Just people just want to like stop and say hi, take your time. Like I'm like, yeah, I'm just, oh, people want to yeah. chat you up yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. keep you hanging there too yeah. long. Like I gotta go. That's fantastic. Wow, I, that really is that. what it's like. I'll right? think about that next time. Like I, I'm just like talking. To, I'm like, you know what? I under, I, I know yeah, what you're, you're going. using me. I know what you're. Getting. I know what you're doing. I know. <laughs> no, like the next time, like I'm talking I'm to a sure woman, I'm like, just want to pet my dog. <laughs> Right. Eyes, eyes are up here. Eyes are down. <laughs> so oh man, dude, this pod is cracking me up, man. Because now I had a dream last night about waiting tables. I haven't had a dream about waiting tables in so long, dude. I had like fifteen tables last night in this dream. Well, let's break it down. I, I okay, couldn't... start it. What do you remember? Give me every detail. Cause like I used, to, I got really good at this from therapy on what the dream really dream? means. Yep. Translating um, dreams. It doesn't mean anything about what it's about. So go ahead. Oh, okay. Typically. I, I okay, just, I kept getting. Um, what restaurant were you at? Do you remember? Did you, was that specific? It was, like a, it was a restaurant that I've eaten at. Okay. So you know it uh, exists. But it was, but yeah, it was kind of like, none, a, none, you worked it's like at. a hybrid. I never okay. worked there. No, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and everybody was like closing up. Mm -hmm. And I was the only waiter there. Mm -hmm. And there was no host. And people were just seating okay, themselves. Okay. So let's stop here. So you're, all, so you're alone. Uh-huh. You're closing up. Is a manager anywhere around? It's just you. Yeah, nobody's. Uh, so you, everybody was there, like in my in my you know in your dream. So like it you're was like, a restaurant that was going on. It was going on, and then all of a sudden, it was just you and nothing. Right. As, as towards the end of the dream, I found out. I'm like, where the fuck did everybody go? So you were alone, having to handle all of the after all of the, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you probably feel in your relationships that maybe you're having to carry the burden. Oh, interesting. More so. Okay. Uh, maybe this show, you feel like you're carrying a burden <laughs> in your marriage. <laughs> I mean, there's a, you know, like okay. it, maybe deep down, you you feel you're left to hold the bag. Okay. And pick the pieces. For the up. record, this is the last time I'm going to bring up a dream on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Finish the dream. <laughs> The the point of the story was I it's so funny because we're talking about waiting. I'm talking about waiting tables so much, and I haven't waited tables in. Man, since I was 30? Oh, man, it's been a while for It's a then. long time since yeah. I waited tables. And I, I'm like, I, it was a, one of those anxiety dreams where I'm like, uh, I can't, you know, it's just run. I'm like, oh, my God, you more people it. are coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was just, um, God, I hate those. I hate, like, an anxiety dream. You ever get, like, loop? 
the dreams where you just keep looping? You know, where you like, I wake up and I go back and it happens again. Uh, I have had that. Um, I don't have many anxiety dreams as much as I have. Like when I was going home, I was having this when I knew I was going to go back to where I grew up and like stay there and shit. I kept having this dream where I'm walking late at night in the neighborhood. But I can't find the house. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have that dream anymore. Uh-huh. Like, but since I've come back, I haven't had it once. Uh-huh. Uh, but I know what that's about. Just because right. of therapy, I know what it's about. Well, sometimes you have a dream. Like, I, you ever wake up with a bit? Like, you, you're working on a bit. You're trying to find a bit. And you wake up, and you're like, oh, dude, I know the punchline. Yep. But this it's is- never right. I've never had to be right. <laughs> it's it's pointed me in a, in a like, a, a direction where, has it ever been right? I don't even know. Like, I have a lot. I smoke a lot of weed before I go to bed because it helps me sleep. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think, fuck, dude, this is so funny. And uh, then it won't be. And the same well, thing with dreams. I'm not talking about before bed. No, I'm no, talking I'm ta- about waking up. Sometimes I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh, write this down. Oh. And it's not a. Um, no, it's, it's not always a, when I'm lucid. It's never when it's like. It's not a solution. It's a um, it's a new uh, path. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's mm-hmm. a new. Oh, that's let me try that. That That's a good and they, way. When, like they when they you're work. stuck on something. It happens with edits too. Like when I'm editing something and I'm stuck on a uh, edit, sometimes I feel I'll wake like that's up and I'll be me- like, I'll be like, oh, this is what I but, should but try. But like you said, I think it's like you're, you are motivated by anxiety. I've been, I've been with you. Like it, it's your motivation is. I gotta forget. I gotta forget. I gotta forget. I gotta forget this guy. I gotta forget this. this I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, it, in your brain, I could see but it. I think what it's uh, for me. I think it's like then when I turn that off, you find a way. I get a clarity. Yes, of, but that's like, what a I moment, mean, though. Like a breath. Be- because you are punching a wall. Right. Once you stop, you see like a new, a softer part of the wall. Yeah. It's just how you operate. I've totally. watched you do it before, yeah, where it's like totally. You'll talk about getting gas for like forty minutes. <laughs> And then you won't talk about it for an hour and you'll figure out a way to get the gas where it's more conducive to the ride. Like, that's just who you are. Ah, dude, we got to get gas. Just let you know. As soon as I get in a car and, and pick you up, I'm like, just let you know we're going to need to stop I, and get gas. I'm like, after a while, I used to engage and then I'm like, oh, he's more saying it for himself. I am. It's more. And of, I didn't know that. And we had to establish myself. that after a first like while in the room. Yeah. Like, oh, he's more saying it. Yeah. To say it. Yeah, yeah. He's not expecting If I me. had a sticky note that I could stick on the fucking windshield, I would do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yes, because yeah, 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 I just yeah, got to yeah. keep reminding myself. Because I'm like, my personality works with yours because I am a logistics problem solver. Mm-hmm. So when you say something like, like now with my wife, I get in arguments with her because it's like uh, she'll do something like that. And I'm thinking she's asking me to get the tools out and fucking mm-hmm. logistics this up. This is how we're going to do it. And I get really into it. And she's like, I really didn't need... I'm just saying it out loud. Mm-hmm, and I'm mm-hmm. like, what the, f- why? Let's fucking get to work. Why What's why is it we're saying if we're not going to fix it? Mm-hmm. That's like my, the way I approach oh, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's problematic in itself. But yeah, I hear that. <laughs> no, I do that too. I do that. I both, I, I play both sides of that. Honestly, <laughs> I'm a fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing for uh, Halloween? Are you taking, uh, what's so, Levi, Levi getting dressed up? Yeah, so we're doing... We're doing uh, a Toy Story thing. Oh, cool. He loves Toy Story. So he's going to be Buzz, and I'm going to be Woody. I bought this costume, and the fucking thing is so tight. <laughs> like, I bought my size, right? <laughs> yeah. But I feel like because of my weight distribution, I'm kind of like, I got uh, my legs are a little bigger. I have a bigger well, butt. Well, you buy from Spirit Halloween? No, no, I actually bought it online. I bought it on Amazon. Like a night, uh, like a yeah, oh. 40, 50, 45 bucks. Oh, okay, okay. But the problem is, it fits everywhere. But when you do like the, I think there's like clasps on the back or like Velcro, I can't get it all the way up because it bunches on my dick and balls. And it's like, a, it, it's not a jump. It's like the material is almost too tight for your balls yeah, like yeah. you could see it it's you could see you have it. such huge balls <laughs> huge dick and balls over here ladies and gentlemen no it, <laughs> you could and laura and i walked out with it on and with it fully fastened Lauren's like you gotta ah, that's, dude, that's way too tight that's I funny see your dick and balls. <laughs> that's funny <Yeah. laughs> so i'm supposed to go trick-or-treating with him but i don't know how i'm gonna do it ah. well, i have to put the woody hat over what's, my what's woody wear is he have sh- 
he just pants? He's well, like so pants, that's right? the thing is because it's like a I can't remember. It's, it's like overalls. It's a jumpsuit with the thing oh, painted it's got on like it. All the things. It's all on, on it. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to have like four pieces of something. Right. Uh, yeah. And my wife's gonna Probably be Bo Peep. Pain on the ass. Oh, Bo I Peep. love it. Yeah, I'm gonna love it. I love it's it now because of him. Child, but yeah. when I was a, yeah. you imagine, you remember when you're in your 20s and early 30s? I mean, we already talked about this, but fucking Halloween, I just really wanted to be around girls, and I could never get around any girls. It was just like, I just wanted to be invited to a place where girls were gonna wear the sluttiest outfits, and I was gonna sit amongst them. It was, I could never find my way to those parties. I never got invited to those. I'm when very I f- angry about it. First went, when I first moved to New York, um, I, you know, I go to the dog park. I had a, a different dog then. Um, made some friends in the dog park. They invited me over. Smoking hot girl. And really? And her boyfriend. Yeah, come out with us. We're going to go into the village. We're going to hang out. My friend will be there. You'll be my friend. Let and I'm like, oh, sweet. About and she's like prospects. dressed. I, I show up and she's. What did you wear? What was your costume first? I, I bought a wig. <laughs> it's funny how. I bought a you wig. Get sober and Halloween just takes a back seat now. You just get a wig. I, no, no, no. I was drinking at the time. Oh. Uh, but uh, I didn't know. Like, I had so many bad experiences with Halloween. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm just going to get a wig. Well, because she threw it out there like the day before. And I was like, oh, I don't even have. So I. Ha- so it was like a, a house party. No, it was like a go down to the village. Oh. It was a play. Th- it was a theater. No, that's right. It was like a theater, uh, players theater. Okay. So there was like a, a event going cool. on. It was like a whole Halloween uh, costume thing. And um, but I show up and, you know, she's in the sexy cheetah oh thing. And I was like, oh, dude, I am. In What's the fucking my, boyfriend I'm, wearing like Tarzan shit and he's all ripped? He it's not super ripped, but he they both had like super cool fucking they were yeah, like they were into it. They were super into it and I show up with like I just had like a sweatshirt. I don't even know what I was trying to be, like a homeless person or something. I don't know what I was trying to be. <laughs> like I just had some things around that I put on. I'm like, I you know, normally I would have like a graphic tee or yeah. something, but I didn't have I had like this ripped sweatshirt and a wig. And uh, they were like, uh, I saw the disappointment in her face. Like when she opened the door and I was just like, she goes, oh, what are you? And I was like, ah, just a costume. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't even, you couldn't even come up with something witty. Thing. I didn't have a thing. I won worst costume at the, at the uh, event. And the, the prize was a bottle of Jack Daniels that I then just started drinking straight from the thing and ended up getting arrested. <laughs> <laughs> so you went with them to this party. It's every and all the uh, the uh, the women are all in those like hot oh. like ca- and, and what I, friend did she want to she to she she uh, was very sexy and she did not want to she partake? was kind of like oh what is this person so you're like, saying solely due to your inability no, like, to she commit was, she was to a like, costume women were disregarding you no 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 but that was like. I was uncomfortable. You know what I mean? You when think you, you shut up as crusty? You get some poontang? Oh, one hundred percent. Because you were into it. But you know what it was like. You ever go to a formal wedding and everyone's wearing his tuxedos and you showed up in like a, a suit? Have no, but ever- I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I've done- so it was like that. So my confidence was really shot, shot, and it because wasn't you realized you didn't read the memo and you couldn't. Yeah, dude, I couldn't I, get on I, board. I misjudged this poorly. That's on them, though. No, it's fine. It was fine. It's, they didn't terrible. do anything wrong. She yeah. just invited me to a Halloween co- uh, yeah. party. She's like, oh, you should come. Yeah, but and then she I didn't show it was fucking Players Theater where everyone has a goddamn wardrobe filled with Yo, costumes. And like the hottest, like all actresses, you know, it's just all actors. And like they were like, I was just so out of my element. Yeah. And then when I won that battle of Jack Daniels, I was You're just like, like this will fix it. The great equalizer <laughs> for social anxiety. <laughs> this will fix it. Jack J. Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> My old pal Jack <laughs> never let me down at any party. So what'd you get arrested for? A public drama. It wasn't arrested. I got uh, a ticket. I got a ticket uh, by, from a cop. It wasn't. A, it was like a misdemeanor. I had to go to court though. Would you? Would so? Did you end public up, drunkenness? Did you bounce from that party alone? Then no, I was there, and then they bounced. From, we all went outside, and then they were like, "Let's." Oh, you were separate. Too, you were too yeah, fucking yeah, rude. Yeah, I just went. Yeah, did you ever just, see them again at the dog park? Uh couple times and ne- and then, never the same huh yeah no and then never again <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me at josh ricardo and go to josh ricardo.com for all dates make sure you subscribe to the podcast ed ed mcgowan uh comedy on instagram ed is my website 
email us. Somebody yeah. fucking email, email us. Workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. Tell us about your job. Uh, we will see you guys again next week. Later. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.